Welcome back to a gloomy day in Thailand on a Saturday where you can hear my voice. I am sick. I have some kind of horrible man illness. I'm medicated to the gills. But I had a breakthrough today. So let's talk about battery balancing. Now, as you might remember, my whole strategy of effectively using these battery cells in my motorbike without having a BMS system. That's my goal. That depends on making sure that when I build the initial pack, every cell is set to 2.900 volts. That way, it's what we call bottom balancing. And the charging will bring the, the voltage up equally in all the cells using the bike will bring the the voltage down equally in all the cells and they go like this that's the plan anyway if i do that at the beginning and then periodically uh, and um, check them and rebalance if necessary it takes away the need to have an active bms inside the battery pack which is adds cost adds complexity and these cheap Chinese BMSs have been uh, blamed for actually destroying battery packs because when they fail, they will take your whole battery pack out. So let's just avoid the whole thing. Now, let's think about scale. One battery, fine. I can bottom balance this thing down to 2.9 volts with reasonably little problems. I built this 16 cell pack and it took me a while to bottom balance all the cells and get them down to where I want. Now, this is my 60 cell module and I'm gonna need three of these for the bike. That's 180 cells, which is those right there. This is going to be really hard to bottom balance all of these by hand and get the kind of accuracy that I'm looking for. So what kind of technology can we throw at this? This is the first thing I tried, the IMAX B6. I have the AC model because it plugs into the wall. This is a piece of garbage. Um, you can see, or you might not be able to see, but up here, these bleed off resistors are just fried. They're burnt. And I uh, initially, all six cells worked, then, in the six cell spot, it brought my battery cell down to under 2.4 volts, which is actually destroying the cell. So I stopped using slot number six. Then slot number three went. Then slot number four went, taking a battery out each time with it. So I cannot trust this thing to bulk discharge my cells. On top of that, it doesn't bring them down to the voltage that I want because it's not configurable. If this was the perfect device, it would not destroy my batteries. It would maintain its own capabilities of a, being a quality product. And it would let me set the voltage that I want to bring it down to. So this is going in the garbage. The next piece of retail technology we can throw at the problem is this Litokala device. It takes the 21700 cells and non-intuitively the plus is at this end and the minus is at that end but and it's great I've used it to test the capacity of the cell it works great it's got another mode where it will charge it's got another mode where it puts it in kind of a storage level uh, voltage but I can't get it to do a discharge function and take my cells four at a time down to 2.9 volts, which to be fair, it's not what it's designed for. What it's designed for, it does well. So I, I like this, but I need different technology. So I realized that there's really nothing on the market that does what I needed to do. So it's time to start building stuff myself. So I built this little discharge device. What it does is it switches in one of two power resistors in series with the battery. 
There's a slow switch, which runs it through a 4.7 ohm resistor, and there's a fast switch that runs it through a 2 ohm resistor. I have to manually watch the voltmeter, and my strategy is to wait for it to go down to 2.8 volts as the power resistors bleed energy off as heat. Then I switch it off, I watch the voltage bounce back up again, and I, I continue to run through this on-off, on-off manual cycle until the battery, when it's not being loaded, reads 2.900 volts. So that's super tedious because I have to watch the meter and manually switch this in and out, and I'm only doing one cell at a time. So I need to apply two... Uh, concepts to this. I want to do this in bulk and I don't want to have to do it manually. So where do we go from here? Okay, so the next thing I tried was let's just start working in bulk. So I went back to my six cell holder, designed this board with six 4.7 ohm power resistors, which will give us a 1.7 amp discharge current, was, which is just under the 0.5C rating of the cells, so the cells will be happy. Then I 3D printed this little holder, which has a tiny little voltmeter and a discharge enable switch for each of the six cells. I mean, it, it's not a great layout, but it does the job. So now I can work in bulk, and I can be switching these on and off uh, as I watch the voltage. But the downside is, as soon as I put a load on the cell, I mean, it is actually discharging, but we lost our voltage. And I'm like, what the hell? The problem is these voltmeters themselves are self-powered from what they're measuring. And as soon as it drops below about three volts, the, the meter doesn't have enough power to power itself. And since I want to be discharging at two, down to 2.8 volts and letting it bounce back to 2.9. These things are gorgeous, but they, they don't fulfill my need. And I didn't realize it as I was doing this, the build of this scenario. So, all right, I need to figure something else out. Okay, so what I need to do is just automate this thing and stop screwing around. So, I was looking at the Arduino Due because I have a few of them lying around, as we all do. The Due is a very powerful little microcontroller, um, and it has analog inputs for reading voltage, and it has digital outputs that would be able to control a circuit that would turn the resistor on and off. So with this board, some resistors, and some uh, some kind of control technology, I can write some microcode that will enable and disable the resistors to bleed off power and read the voltage. And as I do this in a big loop for each of the six cells, I can watch the voltage, turn the resistor on and off, and completely automate the whole process. So basically I would load up six cells, run the program, come back sometime later and all of the batteries would be at exactly 2.900 volts, which is great. Except the Dewey has a small pro problem. The Arduino Dewey natively runs at 3.3 volts, um, which has caused some issues in the world of Arduino because USB runs at 5 volts, so it has to be regulated down to run the chip. This also means that the analog inputs can only read as high as 3.3 volts minus a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be potentially looking at batteries that have up to 4.2 volts in them, which would blow out the inputs on the Dewey. But we have a solution. Enter the Arduino Uno. It is a much less sophisticated system, much cheaper, and it has this big chip with actual pins that go into a socket rather than the Due, which has a surface mount microcontroller. 
the Uno has fewer inputs and outputs, but it runs at 5 volts. And that means all of the analog inputs can tolerate up to 5 volts, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Powered by USB or a, uh, a, a power input pin. And if we can focus here at all, we can see that there are six numbered 0 through 5 analog inputs, which matches with the six cells that I want to run at a time. And over here on the digital uh, pins, there are actually 13. Some of them have dedicated functions, uh, but I will be able to find six digital uh, output pins that will use these to bring the resistors in and out of the circuit. And I can write some code that gets downloaded into this little guy. It's going to be the simplest program in the world. And I think this is a doable solution, as long as I can figure out how to make a circuit that is triggered by the, the relatively low power output of this chip that's driving these pins. Um, usually you drive these pins to drive another thing, like a transistor, which will then turn your thing on and off. But let's see what we can do with this little guy. Okay, here's the Arduino code. What we're going to do is uh, read the analog values from the six inputs, but I'm going to do it in a loop, which will give us kind of a, an, an averaging and smoothing function. And also for each of the readings, I do it two times in a row. I read up in the Arduino groups that doing this will actually give you a uh, better reading. So I read it twice in a row, and then I accumulate the value for each of the six inputs. Then I do a little bit of math to average them out, and then I do a scaling. Because when you read a voltage on this chip, it has 10-bit accuracy, which gives you between 0 and 1,023. Well, that's not volts. So what do we do? We scale this by multiplying that by 5, 5.0 5 volts, which is the maximum reading, and then we divide it by 1024, which is the value, the maximum value for an UNO. I was doing some testing with the DUE before, with the, uh, which has 12 bits of input and a 3.3 volt maximum scaling. So we're going to ignore that for now. All we're going to look as, at is the readings for volts on pin number one. So let's see how that looks as we're executing the code. Okay, the code is up and running on the Arduino Uno, and you can see that we've got the six uh, voltage readings, and they're, they're bouncing all around the place a little bit. Volts number one has got around half a volt, but if I ground the two terminals, it goes back to zero, which is exactly what we're looking for. If I leave them floating, uh, it settles down to around half a volt, which is not great. But now, let's see what happens when I attach a battery to volts one. It goes right to 2.944, 2.943. You can see that the other voltage readings are are remaining about the same. But if I release it, you can see that the the other voltage readings have dropped down to about 0.1. If I put the battery back on number one, the other readings jump up to about half a volt across the way. Now I've done some reading in the forums. This is apparently a known thing. It has to do with something about the way the analog input circuitry is multiplexed on the different analog input pins. Um, I'm not buying it, but in the end, I will have a certain number of cells hooked up to this. The software will know which cells are hooked up, and it will ignore all the other spurious voltages. So 2.944943. Let's see how that looks on a real fluke voltmeter. All right, let's measure this same cell 
with the fluke meter. 3.045, 3.046. So that means that the this little Arduino Uno board is reading about a tenth of a volt low uh, out of 2.9 or 3.0 volts. A tenth is about a thirtieth uh, of that scale. So what I'm going to have to do is in software, I'm going to add a calibration feature with a known good high voltage reference and then I'll scale the reading from there, which is okay in the end because I just need to get the batteries consistent, not at uh, down to the thousandths of a volt to some laboratory standard, but a thousandth of a volt consistent across the entire battery pack. How let's explore how we can use this board to turn the six resistors on and off in the circuit. You can see the code here. I've now turned digital output pins one, two, three, four, five, and six. I've marked those as output pins. And I come down here after I do the, the readings and the output. I'm actually f with this code, I'm looking at the state of each pin. And if it's low, I flip it high. If it's high, I flip it low. Then I write that out to the digital pin. And let's see how this actually works in practice. Okay, here you can see we've got the UNO with the digital output pins coming to the breadboard. That simply, again, jumpers over to these six relays. There's four single relays and a double because I ran out of the singles. These relays, the power is being driven by an, an independent USB uh, power. So the 5 volts to drive these relays is coming from here, not from the board, because I don't want to overload its power supply. What I've done in the code is that it will, every time it runs through the loop, it will flip the relays on and off and on and off. So let's see what happens. Powering up. And we've got all six of the relays. Every time through, they flick on, off, on, off, on, off, which is good because this proves that the UNO's digital output has enough power to trigger the on-off circuit on the relays, which is good because I have the relays. I have them in my hand. I don't have to wait for parts to come from China. So I don't need to design a, uh, a circuit that the UNO drives a transistor, which then drives a MOSFET, which can handle two amps of, uh, of current through it. These relays are rated at uh, DC up to 10 amps. So that, that's no problem at all for us. So that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, the proof of concept works of computer controlled voltage measurement and digital output uh, switching the resistors on and off. Next video, I'll have the calibration for the voltage done. I'll have the circuit built with the resistors and uh, driving, uh, draining energy down from six cells at a time. Or at least cross your fingers that nothing catches on fire. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again. And I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.